Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is enough. When is enough enough? Um, we are in a <clears throat> culture that is constantly striving for more, more productivity, more efficiency, more money, more status, more experience, more, 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 more. And um, it, there are, it, good morning, good morning, Rosalind, welcome. Great to have you here with us this morning. So this morning we're talking about enough. And um, there are times when more is less and less is more and enough is the path to our abundance. So um, we get to talk about that this morning, should be fun. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy, to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any tension that's remaining, any stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together, feeling the friction, the temperature, the texture, the pressure, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to have you all here this morning. Rosalind and Bernadette and Lisa. Lisa, we haven't seen you for a while. Bernadette, welcome back. It's great to be with all of you and everybody else who's joining us. So. Today's topic is enough. And um, when we talk about enough, uh, we get to look at when is enough enough. I, I, I think I um, was present to this topic because so many of us are caught up. Gia, Gia, good evening. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us this morning here, your evening there. And um, when we're talking about more, it's easy to get caught up in wanting more, right? I want more. And I think wanting more is different from wanting different. So um, let's just talk about more, you know, whether it's more joy, more experience, more money, more of everything and anything. And I wonder, truly, truly, when we can find the place of enough that is the source of the experience of true abundance, you know, as long as we're believing in more, or investing ourselves in more, then by definition, what, what we have, what we experience is insufficient. It's not enough if we need more. And so there's, there's a lack, a lack by definition, when we're wanting more, we're affirming lack. And um, I, I think that so many people get so wrapped up in the frantic pursuit of 
productivity, of efficiency, of acquisition, of um, just more that um, we lose our center. We lose our our presence because we're caught up in this vain pursuit um and we've talked about enough before we've talked about more we've talked about sufficiency um but i i think i think that sufficiency is is such a beautiful place to come from like being enough because in being enough there's abundance in being enough if ha in having enough in doing enough there's there's this opening that can occur to experience the gift of abundance so you know it's interesting when we talk about abundance usually we talk about it in the context of wanting more you know i want abundance but we're not recognizing the abundance that we already have and um it's interesting because over the past several days, we've talked about prioritization. We've talked about money. We've talked about time. We've talked about spending our lives. And um, this is, this is, I guess, it feels like it's a continuation of that conversation, but in the context of satisfaction like cultivating our our satisfaction and I, and i think it's important to note that satisfaction does not equate to complacency you know i think um the the delusion is that we find a place uh and space of satisfaction and then we don't do anything anymore. And that could be at least for a little while. But frankly, I think that what happens is that our soul comes forward with its desires, expressing its desires and expressing its impulse to expression. And then whatever we create, whatever we do, emerges from that space of inspiration rather than the space of of lack and um this is I, I you know it, it occurs to me where this conversation is coming from also is a conversation that i had with a new client who was talking about being addicted to productivity and we got into the question about, well, what is productivity? And is, is productivity a um, production of things or situations or circumstances? Is, is what is productivity and what motivates it? Um, is productivity for the sake of productivity of value without intention? And that's what this person came to is that that it was important for them to connect to the intention behind their doingness. And um, this this obviously goes into a conversation about human doing versus human being. And uh, as we connect, more to our beingness to our essence to our alignment then the doing that emerges from that is an expression of our essence is of our soul 
and and it is a more authentic expression in life and so what this person came to awareness about was that by doing less by being more discerning about the doing rather than this frenetic movement to do everything and to be productive that in fact it would be not only a richer experience but it would be more meaningful you know i mean it, it richer experience in being able to slow down and actually be present and appreciate the experience as it's evolving rather than you know having all these things pulling from a multitude of directions so i'm wondering if this notion of less is more resonates for you where actually more can be less you know more more um, obligations responsibilities productivity effectiveness um, more climbing more grasping becomes less quality of life becomes less aligned with who you are and what your intentions are in the world that in fact you know it, I, just the uh, the tortoise and the hare story just popped into mind where the hare was running 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 and the tortoise was slow and steady and the tortoise won in the race um i think the fact that it was a race kind of ruins that that story a bit but um to be able to be present to the richness of life and connected is where we need to be. I think it's this addiction, cultural addiction to productivity that and efficiency and more has, is what has gotten our world into the state that it's in because we weren't present to the consequences of our actions until it was too late, you know, until um, the consequences were dire. And um, hopefully it's not too late, but, uh, you know, I think, I think we get to look at slowing down enough to appreciate what's present to be present because there is a richness in the present that we lose when we're in this constant um striving and race for for success or whatever, you know, whatever the uh, externalities are. Externalities meaning the things that, you know, we're proving ourselves in the world. Like, what have you done lately? Kind of thing. And um, rather than having these external measures of value to start internalizing value we've been talking about value also this week and values and what do we value what do we what are we investing our lives into and our hearts and souls and our literal life energy what are we investing in and when we give ourselves space to breathe then perhaps we can start appreciating the gift of breath and the the experience of abundance in this present moment you know it's in this conversation with you that i really am recognizing that this quest for more 
is a denial of abundance. And it's only when we get to enough. Enough is the state of abundance. You know, like that, that there's not that striving, that necessity to be grasping. So let's have your engagement here. Let's, let's hear what this is stirring for you as, as we um, culturally are conditioned and encouraged to do more, to be more, to um, to chase this notion of of more, and uh, I I I think that there's really I think that one of the greatest inhibitions or um, fears about enough is that we'll end up being irrelevant, that we'll end up being, that we'll disappear, that we'll do nothing. And um, as some people say, you know, I'll just go sit in the cave and meditate as if that's nothing. Because I, I I don't believe that sitting in the cave and meditating is nothing, by the way, because what's shifting there is the frequency of being and that we are all connected. We are truly, literally all connected. The breath that we breathe was breathed by the dinosaurs. You know, the the breath that we breathe was has stardust in it. And um, we are all literally connected through through our breath, even, you know, that the atmosphere has been here for forever. And it's it's got components of the atmosphere that was here in the very beginning and as we breathe it we're breathing that history we're breathing that connection we're breathing that richness of experience and wisdom and time and space and when we when we breathe into that connection, what's available to us? What's available to us? There's there's abundance beyond concept, beyond conceptualization. That's unbounded. So, what are you thinking? Let's hear from you. When we when we step back, you know, it's it's interesting because I know for a lot of folks, uh, here we go. Rosalind says, the notion that the body is not strong enough. I need to exercise more so my body can be a vehicle for me to move through life. Well, Rosalind, that topic is really close to my heart right now because I'm noticing that exercising has made such a difference in my experience of life, not just moving through life, but that's been, that's been a whole new experience too, to move through life feeling that like I'm in a strong body. Um, so the notion that the body is not strong enough um, I think I think there's a place of balance maybe to say how am I now and what is going to what feels even better you know and and maybe maybe when we look at what feels better 
you know, in a way it's a more thing, right? But better is more. Um, and when you work out, when you work out, do you keep working out in one workout to the point where you can't move anymore and then you're crippled for days because you made it too much? Or do you expand to a place where that's enough? Like I noticed that that's something that is a conversation for me when I go to the gym is, is this enough for today? Would more be too much? Um, and I think if the drive to strengthen yourself is coming from your internal space, then, then there's a richness about it. Jenny says trophy. That's how I'm feeling these last couple of weeks. Like you received a trophy, Jenny. Well, I have to say you've, you've been through it, girlfriend, you've been through it. And um, you, you have for sure received a reward that has, that has transformed the context for your experience. And, oh, geez, no. Um, so Jenny's saying atrophy. I thought, um, well, okay, so if atrophy is, well, that's, that's a shame. But if that's the case, tune in, find out what your soul is calling for, you know, find out what you're moved to do or think or feel or, you know, to presence yourself rather than coming from a state of pushing and, and, um, grasping or reaching instead to just tune in and align with yourself and you know I realize that it's not necessarily as easy as it sounds you know some people have silenced their inner voice so completely that they just can't hear it and I'm not saying that's the case for you Jenny I'm saying it takes practice and and a commitment to be willing to hear that voice, let alone heed it. And it can start with little things. You know, it can start with um, what would what would raise my frequency in this moment? Melissa Hayes, I don't believe I've seen you here before. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you here this morning. We're talking about more and and really we're talking about when is enough enough and how this concept of more undermines the experience of abundance, which is an interesting take on things, right? Because usually when we talk about abundance, we think about it in the context of more. But if we're always striving for more, what we're affirming is lack and uh so as with all our other conversations or pretty much all our other conversations this conversation comes back to presence being present being present to the wonder and awe that is available to us all around us all the time. So, so Jenny says, nah, not, at, not a trophy at all, atrophy as in health, chronic kidney disease is becoming hard reality, gasp. Yeah, I think energy heal, healing of some sort so so good jenny um facing health challenges is just it's it's challenging to body mind and spirit and um finding ways to source your spirit is it 
can be very challenging, but it's also a way that we can hopefully, hopefully we can find a way to rise above the circumstance and and allow ourselves the gratitude, you know, healing energy. Gratitude is a place to find that energy and to be grateful for, for what we do have, even in the face of, of dire challenges. Melissa says, yes, I always say I have plenty gratitude. Well, hopefully you don't just say it. Hopefully you actually experience it. I'm guessing that you do. Um, Jenny says energy healing to help others is a calling to me to help myself as well. A hundred percent, Jenny. I think most of the energy workers that most of the people that get into energy work or healing are drawn there because they need their, they need healing. I know that's certainly ca the case for me, you know, being in this path of transformation has been because I really needed to experience transformation and um it's it's the the school of life experience you know that brings us into um focusing our interest and attention you know it's all it's often because it's driven from something internal trying to solve solve a situation for ourselves and um good for you to be engaging in that so anyway i think we get to think about this paradox of abundance being uh or the the um the quest for abundance being a uh an affirmation of lack and instead, perhaps looking at sufficiency and enough as true abundance. What does that look like when we declare, I have enough, I, I am abundant, you know, that I don't have to keep striving for more. And from that, there's there's maybe a, an ease that allows us to be even more present to our heart and soul. So Rosalind says, the notion that my community is not connected, I can ask myself how I'm showing up for others. So provide that for how I would like to see others show up. Right. Um, that's also a beautiful thing to recognize that our externality is in many, many ways a reflection of our internal experience. So if we're feeling that our community is not connected, perhaps we're not connecting to our community. Um, so Jenny says, my daughter told me she became level one Reiki certified and I started a business selling tarot card book and pendulum. She definitely had my DNA. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I love the notion of your business. It sounds really cool. The tarot cards. Um, beautiful. Anyway, consider, consider enough. And what does that look like? Not lack, not settling, but truly enough, truly sufficient, truly abundant. What does that look like? And how can you source that in your life? How, you, how can you recognize it in your life? And with that, that's it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I, oh, Dido, welcome, welcome. It's great to have you here with you, with us. <laughs> great to be here with you. Um, and uh, Jenny says, have 
a full, blessed, beautiful day, Rosalind says, being versus becoming, being enough. Yes, 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 Rosalind. That's what it comes down to is being enough. And uh, with that, I in, um, invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And please join us again at 9 a.m. Eastern on a weekday morning. And until next time, so, so, so much love to you. <laughs>